Okay, so welcome back to the second part of lecture four. So here we're just looking at uh, counting rules. So probability, at times we're interested in finding out the number of all possible outcomes. And to do this, we use counting rules. So the first counting rule says that if any, if anyone, if any one of the K different mutually exclusive events and collectively exhaustive events can occur on each of N trials, the number of possible outcomes is equal to kn okay so we have an example there okay so this material is found in the uh, the prescribed book i think i already sent it to you business statistics okay so an example is given that if we toss a coin five times Okay, so if we toss a coin five times, we know the number of maximum options for one coin, we have only two options. But we are told that we, we are going to toss the coin five times, so therefore we're going to say this is given by k to the power a, and our k is two. And now n is k. Uh, k is two. Uh, n is five. Therefore, the number of all possible outcomes when we toss a coin five times is k n, which is just two to the power five, and it gives us a thirty-two. Okay, so that is how we can use that first room. In the, in the second room, we are told that uh, if, there, if there are K1 events on the first trial and K2 events on the second trial, and KN events on the nth trial. Now here you have a lot of trials. Then the possible number of outcomes is just uh, uh, the number of all possible outcomes will be K1 times K2 times K3 up to all the k's, k-a. Okay, so uh, an example is given. Okay, so let me give you Example two, based on the counting rule number two, says that suppose we want to create a license plate with two letters and a number. Okay. We want to create a license plate consisting of two letters and a number. What is the total number of possible outcomes? So here we want uh, we want the first letter, we want the second letter, and a number. So how many letters do we have? We have 26. Okay.
So let's say K1 is the first letter. Actually, it's not this. Okay. First letter. Okay, all right. So, okay. So K2 will be the second. Later. And K3 will be a number. So this is just one digit. There we have 26 letters, 26 letters, then we want a digit. We know the digits are just 0, 1, up to 9, and these are 10. Okay, so that means uh, the number of all possible outcomes, K1 times K2 times K3, which just uh, is... 26 multiplied by 26 multiplied by 10. And this gives you 6, 7, 6, 0. So this is the number of all possible outcomes if you want to create a license plate with two letters and a number or yeah, a digit. All right, so let's move to the third uh, counting room. So you have those examples, please go through those other examples. Okay, so in the third counting room, we're told that the number of ways that N items can be arranged in order is given by N factorial. Okay, so arranging N objects just given by n factorial, which is just uh, n multiplied by n minus one multiplied by n minus two. Up to, up to multiplication of one. So if we want two factorial, this is just two multiplied by one. One four factorial, this is uh, four multiplied by three, multiplied by two, multiplied by one. So it's all up to one. But remember, one factorial is one, zero factorial is also one. Okay. So this, you pronounce it as factorial. You will see that function is also there on your calculators. So you don't need to be doing four times three times two times one, no. You just need to put four and you press on the factorial function on your calculators. So please identify your factorial functions on your calculators. So we're given an example. Um, if a set of six books is placed on a shelf, in how many ways can the six books be arranged? So we have six books and we want to arrange them. So we can arrange them in six factorial ways. So six factorial gives you 720. So the next uh, counting rule uh, is very interesting. In here, we have the number of ways of arranging x objects from n objects. OK, so this is known as permutation. In permutations, uh, order is taken into consideration. So in permutations, in permutations, 
equations A B is not the same as B A because the order here it is the order is different. So order is taken into consideration when dealing with permutations. Okay, so when you want to select X from N objects, we say N permutation X, which is just given by N factorial over N minus X factorial. Okay. So n is the total number of objects. So from n, you are choosing, you are permuting x. OK. So p is the symbol for permutation. Now, in the example that we're given, that we have six books on a shelf, the question is, if you have six books, but there's only room for four books on the shelf. In how many ways can you arrange the, these books on the shelves? So we're given there, this is just uh, from six, permutation four. So n is six, x is four, and you do that, you then find three cities. So the last counting room talks about uh, combinations. So in combinations, we don't care about uh, order. So A, B is just the same as B, A, because we find the same letters in permutations. So there we have that a number of, the number of selecting X from N, irrespective of order, is known as a combination. So N, combined with x. Sometimes we say n choose x. So from n, we are choosing x. That is the formula that you are given there. So for combinations, for combinations, we have n choose x, which gives us n factorial over x factorial in brackets n minus x factorial. OK, so that is the formula for combinations. Now, uh, in our previous example, we are told here that if we have, if the order of the books on the shelf is irrelevant, how many ways can we arrange uh, four from six books. Okay. So, therefore, we do the N, choose X, which is that formula that gives you that, and the answer is 15. Okay, so you find that the permutations are usually more than the combinations because uh, the combination minimizes the doesn't care about the order, okay? So where you had, maybe in permutations, you had A, B, and B, A, in combinations that would just be considered as the same thing. So you expect the combinations to be less than your permutations, okay? Then the other thing that I want to say is that actually the combination N choose X, that uh, function is already there on your calculator. So n choose x, use this formula first that I've been uh, that I've given you, then try and uh, look for the same function on your calculators and just put your n like six. You put the combination function, you press the combination function, and then you put a four. You will get the same answer. Okay. So we're going to end here with, uh, with counting techniques. The other thing that we're going to look for to actually, I mean, the other thing that we're going to do, maybe let me just say this. The counting techniques conclude probability chapter, okay? 
So the counting techniques conclude the probability chapter. So at this point, we are, we are done with probability. Okay. So as part of lecture four, we're going to begin an introduction to probability distributions. Okay, so this is actually the next topic, probability So we're looking at probability distributions. We have just seen how to find probabilities. Okay, so we now move on further. All right. Now, one thing that we have to, to, I mean, to know is the definition of a random variable. Okay, so a random variable is defined is defined as a a variable that that takes on different numeric numerical Okay, so we have talked about variables. So uh, we're saying that a random variable is actually a variable that takes on different numerical values because of chance. Okay, so it takes on values and it is denoted by capital X. Okay. So examples include the number of television sets in a home. Okay, we can say number of children. Uh oh. I'm writing chicken. Number of children. We can say the weight of five students. Okay, so when you look at this number of TVs in a home, this will be a number, maybe some have two, others have three, and some have one. Number of children also varies, so that value that a random variable takes, it can be one, it can be two, can be 10, can be whatsoever number. Weight of five students, again, the value that your, the variable takes. So that can be the weight maybe, 40 kg, 55 kg, 55.5, 70.8, okay? All those various values. So the value will be denoted by X. Now remember, we talked about discrete random variables and continuous random variables. Okay, so we're going to see how we can apply that in here. All right.
So we now move to the other term that will frequently use. So uh, a discrete random variable So this is a variable that can assume only countable numbers. So only countable numbers. So this includes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. So if a random variable can assume the countable numbers, then we know that that is a discrete random variable. And a continuous random variable is a variable a continuous random variable is a variable that that can assume any value in that range distribution. For a probability distribution, is actually a list. A list of probabilities associated with each of its possible random values. So it is just uh, a list. Okay. So let's have examples. Okay, so the first example. Okay. So when we roll a die 
and we let x be the number just show them that be the number of times four comes up then our x will be zero it can be zero when you roll a die there's no a four doesn't come up then our x is zero and if you roll a coin a die and a four comes up once then x is one okay if the if a four comes up twice then x is two so depending on the number of times that you roll, you can find the probabilities. So uh, our probability, so these are the random variables. So we have x will be 0, 1, 2, and so on. Now, if we associate these random variables with the probabilities, then we'll have a probability distribution. Okay, now if we roll, okay, and second one, if we toss a coin twice and X be X be Okay, so um, X be the Okay, so if we toss a coin twice and uh, X, we have X as the we have X as the the time We, okay, let's just put it in this way. Uh, X will be the times we obtain a head. Number of times or just obtaining a head. Okay, so that is our random variable. So if we toss a coin twice, we can have a tail and a tail, tail and the head, head and the head, head and the tail. So these are the maximum possible outcomes when you toss a coin twice. So the number of times that we obtain a head those values that x would take on here we didn't have a head so x can be zero there we just had one head so x can be one there we just had uh, we had two heads actually so x can be two now we just have one head, so x can be one, which is already stated. Okay, so if we have this list where we have x and the probability of x, x can be zero. What is the probability that we just, we don't have a head? So we have four outcomes of which one doesn't have a head. So this one that doesn't have a head is just uh, gives us the probability of one over four. When x is one, out of four outcomes, we have two times when we just have one head. There and there. Okay, so therefore we have two 
over 4 as our probability. When x is 2, where well, we have two heads, we just have one time, time when we have two heads. Therefore, our probability is just one over four. So now we have a list of the random variable and the associated probability, and this is a probability distribution. Okay. So that is the probability distribution. Then we move to the next thing. So we have the distinction between x and small x. Okay, so when dealing with random variables, a random variable is denoted by x. Okay, but the specific value is denoted by small x. For example, the probability that x is 2. Okay, so in the previous example, x was the number of heads. Okay, so the probability that x is 2 can simply be written as general the probability that x is equal to a small x. So we can say the probability that x is 2, the probability that x is, uh, is 3, the probability that x is 1. OK, so we put the specific value to be a small x. OK. So this one, probability that x is x, it just implies that the probability that the random variable x takes on a specific value, small x. OK. So that is on the distinction. We're talking about random variables. Sometimes we want to know its measure of central tendency. And to do that, we use or we find the, the mean. So the mean of a random variable is also called the expected value. The expected value of x. And this is denoted by e x. OK. Now, the expected value, note that the expected value of x is also known as mu. OK? So this is written like this, mu, but you pronounce it like that. So mu. So this. Uh, we've actually known from the previous lecture that the mean is actually, the population mean is known as mu. So the expected value of a random va uh, variable x is uh, also known as mu. Okay. So uh, there's a formula that we use to find the expected value. Expected value of x is just given by the summation of xi 
multiplied by the probability of x i. Okay, so you get each random variable and multiply by the probability. After that, you sum, and that sum gives you the expected value. Okay, so let's use the previous uh, example to find the expected value when x is the number of heads obtained. Remember, our xi Okay, so we had zero, which had one over four. One, obtaining one, one head had a probability of two over four, and obtaining two heads had a probability of one over four. So remember the formula, we need the sum of x i multiplied by the probability. So we get each random variable and it's multiplied by its probability. So we get that. Okay, so here xi, I just mean that there are a lot of uh, the x values that you can take. Okay, so the first one we have zero times one over four, which is just a zero. One times two over four gives you a two over four. 2 times 2 over 4 gives you 2 over 4. Okay, so we have 2 times 1 over 4 gives us a 2 over 4. So when we sum, what's the total? When you add everything, you have a 4 over 4 to just 1. OK, so therefore, the expected value of x is 1. So that is how we find the expected value. You just multiply each random variable with uh, the associated uh, probabilities. Okay, so we have some properties. We have some properties of uh, the expected value. So that's how we get the expected value of x squared. 
Okay, so these are the properties of the expected value. Whenever we're talking about the measure of central tendency, we always want to know the measure of dispersion as well. Okay, so here we concentrate on the variance and the standard deviation of a random variable. Okay, so variance. So say let X be a random variable with me real. The variance denoted by variance of x is given by variance of x will be the sum of xi minus the expected value, which is just mu, multiplied by the probability of xi. So sometimes you find that here I put expected value, it's still the same thing because the expected value is the same as it is the same as uh, the mu. Okay, so there are two formulas here, or you can use this one. The variance of x is just the same as the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared. So these are the two formulas that you can use. And uh, to find the standard deviation, actually, before we go to the standard deviation, just take note. Take note, variance of x is denoted by sigma squared. In okay, case so this is the uh, how we denote the variance of the random variable x. It is denoted, denoted by sigma squared. Okay, so let me just write that. Sigma. Sigma squared. Okay, so the the standard deviation of the uh, random variable is is denoted by sigma and sigma which is the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance of x okay so when you square the variance of the random variable x, we get uh, the standard deviation. Okay, so the next sub topic in probability distribution are, or I mean is probability discrete. Okay, so from here in lecture five, we're going to look about discrete uh, probability distributions. Okay, and then after that, we'll look at continuous this uh, probability distributions. Okay, so in the discrete, we'll be talking about binomial and Poisson. 
And uh, in continuous this uh, probability distribution, we'll be talking about the exponential, okay? Uh, I mean, yeah, the exponential, the uniform, and the normal probability distribution. Okay, so thank you so much. We end here for lecture four. Nice.